Okay, now, if you've seen any of my other videos, you would know that I have no style or preference to region or era when it comes to trains. I like everything. Uh, I'm an equal opportunity train liker. Uh, and today is no different. So, right now, here we are. We have a Japanese bullet train. That's right, it is the Kato 500 series. I'm not even going to pretend I know how to pronounce Japanese Shinkashazen uh, Nozami uh, bullet train and it's 100% Japanese you can see the entire box itself is in Japanese which I can't read uh, of course when it came to the instructions and how these things should run uh, it was a mess but who cares uh, I have a bullet train that's all that counts right and so you can see this is just the head car uh, looks great right here I do have the complete set of this series. It came in three different pieces. Uh, the starter set, of course, is right here, which I already showed, and then, of course, two uh, add-on cases as well for 16 cars in total. So let me get them all out on the track there, and uh, we'll show you what they all look like. Well, here it is, all put out on the track. You can see it's super long, 16 cars in all. Uh, we'll get it going here so again you can see how it moves and it does move because it is a bullet train See, it struggles just a little bit. You can hear it around corners and stuff. Okay, so this is the head cars we already kind of saw. Um, looks good, of course. I do can't complain about the looks of bullet trains, and uh, this one is no exception. One of those more modern look looking ones uh, with the, of course, tapered huge front end. Uh, which just looks awesome. Of course, this is modeled after the real one in Japan there. But uh, as far as the other cars are concerned, um, you know, here's a standard coach car that goes in the Terra Land. You'll notice it doesn't have normal connectors. It has these weird, uh, whatever they're called, connectors <laughs> uh, between cars. And so how they connect is kind of weird to get to you to get used to. But you just kind of put them together uh, like so and snap them together like that and they are stuck so I can like you know hold it upside down and they're not going anywhere these are pretty solid <laughs> solid connection uh, between them so again there are 16 cars in total two front ends uh, and I guess 14 middle ones this is a standard coach car like I said now this one's actually the engine so the motor is actually in this guy uh, because I noticed a lot of these bullet trains when I was looking around to which ones I wanted, a lot of them, almost actually every single one, had them in the in one of the middle cars. I like running this one second or third. Um, I think if I translated correctly from the manual, uh, that this motor car is supposed to go somewhere in the middle, but uh, I found that it started to jerk around a lot, especially around corners when he did that, so I like putting mine second or third. Doesn't stop it completely, but it helps. So this one's more or less a dummy. There's nothing here. It's just a, a shell. Uh, it does have the two front lights, as you probably saw. But yeah, this is the actual engine. And it weighs a good amount to keep it on the track. The other type is uh, the one with the power pickup. So you can see up front here, if I can get it to focus. Uh, it has a little thingy that flips up. Uh, like they do in real life, I suppose. Uh, looks pretty cool when it does flip up like that. Um, but yeah, those are the kind of the, the main parts. Like I said, there's 16 in total. Uh, but for the most part, they all kind of look alike. So here's the back. Looks exactly like the front, except, uh, well, I guess it is exactly like the front, except for the top has one square where the front has two. But uh, forward, forwards and reverse, those two lights in there will go red or white, depending on which direction you're going. Uh, either one, either one will, will do that. So as far as that overall look is concerned, I'm giving it a 9, because it does look mighty sharp, as uh, bullet trains certainly should. So no complaints, or very little, 
from a design look standpoint uh, of it. Here is the complete set in its entirety uh, and it's in its boxes. Uh, like I said, it came in three sets, uh, if you will. The first being the starter set, which is again just the starter set. You get the the two tail ends and an engine and a, and a coach car. Another one is a pack of four. Uh, probably this one because then you got spots for your front and back engines as well. Um, and then you get a pack of eight, uh, which are these over here. So in total, uh, like I said, I got the three com combining purchases from eBay and Amazon, uh, whatever had the better deal at the time. Uh, I kind of keep these in the boxes themselves uh, when they're displayed away because there's just too many of these cars that all kind of look the same. So there's just no room in the, in the display case for them. Uh, they also come with these funny little stickers. I don't really know because there's no there's no separation between them all. I haven't figured out how to apply these uh, to them, which I think they're stickers. I just can't tell how to put them on. So that's also there, but I haven't done anything with them yet. Now, as far as the materials go, at first glance, they feel a little cheap. But uh, that's probably because of the high-end plastic, as I've explained. Uh, here's a better view of those little seats inside, if you can. I don't know if it comes across good or not, but they are there. Um, so, overall, I think it, they did a pretty good job on the materials front. Um, like I said, it, it feels cheap because it's light, but it's pretty high quality once you start playing around with it, because you want that really high-end type of plastic. Uh, for these kind of cars. So from the materials, uh, giving it an 8. So not too bad. Pretty good. And here it is in its stationary position. Do a quick flyby here so you can see it all in detail. Uh, they did a pretty good job. Uh, it feels a little cheap as the Kato's tend to be, but for the most part, uh, I think that cheapness is just the high quality of the materials. Because um, you want a real li nice light car uh, so that it can fly around the track with ease and so I think because they feel really light that might be why I think at first glance they feel cheap but after using it you can tell uh, they're pretty high quality. I do wish a lot of the cars looked a little different I mean you can't really knock the model it's more of the design of the train itself that it's based on because uh, they all kind of blend together and look the same. Now there are various differences. You can see those little white things at the top. Don't know what they do, but uh, only two of them have it. And there might be some difference in the windows and stuff like that, but for the most part, they all kind of blur together when they, it's uh, running down the track. There's uh, only two of them with some electrical pickup. Right there you can see one of them. Uh, they flip up and down. So you can see it flips and you can move it back up. Now these don't actually work. Some models have that where that actually does can pick up the electrical, uh, the electricity for the train, but uh, since I don't even have that, <laughs> I don't really care if it works or not. But uh, you can see the little detail there. There are little seats inside. Don't know if you can tell or not. Um, did a good job overall uh, after studying this some more, so can't knock it for that. Uh, really like having a bullet train. It's pretty fun to run around at speed even though it can derail at times, but hey, I think it's uh, pretty good overall from a look standpoint. I do think these bullet trains are pretty unique. You don't see them a whole lot. Not too many people have them. They're mainly out of Japan, uh, even though I know like France has their TGV or whatnot. But uh, they seem to be more common out of Japan, especially from a model standpoint. But even then, you don't see them too often. So I'm giving it a 9 on the uniqueness scale because, like I said, you don't see bullet trains too often. And uh, this one looks pretty darn awesome uh, as is. So uni uniqueness, well not off the scale, but you know what I mean. It's getting a 9 for me because it is pretty cool and I don't have anything else like it. Unfortunately, the noise of this thing is pretty loud, as you probably heard uh, when it's running around there. It's not quiet at all, uh, but it is a bullet train, so maybe it's supposed to be loud. I don't know. Uh, I do wish it was a lot quieter. Uh, I think I'd like it a lot more uh, from a runnability standpoint, because like I said, I got my stuff running around the living room. I like to run my trains when I'm watching TV or something. So kind of tough to do, 
I found myself now only running it when I'm cleaning or something like that, just to have something fast running around, uh, and I can drown it out with some music or something uh, when I do that. So, wish it was quieter. I'm giving it a 3 on the scale, just because it is a bullet train, so it's supposed to be loud, but I don't like the loudness to begin with. So it's getting a 3, but it could be worse. It could be a worse, or a worse rating, for sure. As for power requirements, here's the speed we're running at that I'll show you here in a minute of how fast it's going. You can see we're halfway up the dial, and uh, the next bit here will show you how fast it goes at that speed. Okay, so here's how fast it runs at half speed there. You can see it struggles a little bit around the corners actually, but I mean for as fast as a train normally goes, that's not bad. Of course, when you crank it up a notch there, you can see uh, only three-fourths of the way up is going as, as fast as that last part. So pretty good on the power. So from that uh, analysis there, it's getting a 7 on the power scale for me. Okay, quiz time. Which one has the motor? Well, you're both wrong, because it's this one. <laughs> like I said, everything kind of looks together, looks the same. Hard to tell which one the motor actually is, but uh, it's this guy right here. From a strength perspective, it is pretty strong. I mean, it can pull everything with ease, no problem. It does kind of struggle around the corners, but I th think that's not really a motor issue. It's more of a, probably a weight thing, uh, It does because it does seem to be pretty strong. You'll see on the bottom here, it does have... If you can, if it focuses, one traction tire uh, on that side, and then the other on this side, uh, on the opposite side. So there's two traction tires to keep it, you know, with some grip. But I think it needs some more weight behind it uh, to really help it around those corners. But the motor itself, I'm going to give a seven for strength. Slow crawl, uh, it works. You can see the light on the front flickering a little bit there, but uh, hey, it moves pretty slow. I don't know why you'd ever want a bullet train to go at this speed, but <laughs> uh, it, it works pretty good at slow speed. So in that regards, I'm going to give it a, let's say an 8, because, you know, it it's not bad. A little loud for going that slow, but it still it moves pretty smoothly, so can't knock it for the speed at all, uh, even though this is a bullet train and you're supposed to run these things pretty fast. But, uh, yeah, not terrible. <laughs> in terms of derailment, unfortunately this thing does derail quite often, uh, mainly at speed, not so much at medium speed, but when you really crank it up, uh, it can derail. Now I do have a lot of tight t corners and things on my, my layout the way I have it, so it's probably that reason. Uh, if I had some smoother turns, maybe it wouldn't, it wouldn't you know, derail so much, but once you start to get about three-fourths of the way up on the on the dial, uh, and it hits that corner just right, it's popping off. Uh, which is unfortunate because it's a, you know, a bullet train, so you want it to go fast. But I gotta give it a 3 from that regard because, you know, it, it does come off, unfortunately. You just have to watch it and uh, make sure it doesn't, so... You gotta get it just right on the speed duck gauge so you don't go too fast around those corners. As far as problems go, I haven't really uh, had any there. 
Um, mainly the hardest thing that I had to begin with was how just in the world you connect these guys because it is a bit tricky when you first get going but uh, once you got the process down it can uh, it's, it can do it with ease. Uh, getting it on the track is a little tough too because it does have these low profile wheels so you gotta watch out for that uh, when it does derail of how to get it back on because of course when it derails you just can't pick everything up because everything's connected together right sequentially like this and so you have this big long train that you just have to fiddle with until they all get back on. Uh, but really, you can't really complain about that, so I'm giving it a 9 from a problems perspective. Just a little bitty ding, just because of all the nonsense you have to deal with to get it back on the track. As far as the value of this thing goes, uh, it's not cheap, that's for sure. Um, wanted a really high-end bullet train. Certainly got it with this one, uh, I would say, overall. Uh, came in three sets, like I stated in the beginning. The first starter set was $99. The other two sets were a total of $170, I think. So $270 in total. Uh, like I said, a little pricey for what you get, but you know, it's, it's, it is cool. I, it, it's super cool. Uh, gotta give it a three though for what you get, the, however. Um, kind of disappointed of how loud it is. Like I said, really wish it was a lot quieter. And the derailment at high speeds, I mean, it is a bullet train, so that's kind of unfortunate as well. You know, I'm glad I got it, because it is really cool and unique and different. Uh, but it is pricey, unfortunately, and I had to pay a pretty hefty premium uh, to enjoy this, which I most certainly do. Okay, when you total it all up, it comes in at 66. Uh, lower than I would have liked, especially for the price I paid. Uh, but hey, what can you do? Uh, it really comes back down to that noise and uh, derailment ability. Uh, if, the, if those two were fixed, this thing would be beautiful and amazing. Uh, but short of that, this is what you get. So, I don't know if there's any better bullet trains out there. would love to know if you have one down below. But uh, I think I did pretty good uh, with, with this setup here. Now one final note here, you can put lights in these. I've looked into it. It would cost me roughly another $80 to do so. Probably not going to do that. I wish I could and it was cheaper, but after, you know, 270 invested already, I can't swallow another 60 to put lights in them. Uh, because like I said, since it's so loud, I kind of only run this when I'm cleaning or something. So the lights at night won't really have the same effect. Uh, for this one. But hey, if I can find some cheap Okado lights at some point in the future, uh, I might slap them in there. But, uh, you know, unfortunately there's 16 cars here, so hey, those Kato lights come in packs of six or one, so do the math. You still need to pay a little extra than the bulk six and six price, because you either need three of those packs or two of those with another four. So, you know, I don't think I'm going to put lights in these anytime soon, but I wish I could. <laughs> Uh, with that, I'll kind of leave it here. Let me know what you think below, as always, and uh, hey, what should I get next? Would love to know as well.